Now let's talk about how to systematically simplify given Boolean expression using kmap. In doing so, we define two terms. Uh, first one is a uh, prime implicant, uh, and the second one is essential prime implicant. Uh, prime implicant is defined as a product term obtained by combining the maximum possible number of uh, adjacent cells in the map uh, and the number of uh, cells uh, is a power of two so you have two cells or four or eight or sixteen and the like uh, so we don't care about uh, three cells which is not a power of two so prime implicant uh, is a group of uh, adjacent cells uh, maximum possibility and then the number of cells should be a power of two and the essential prime implicant is a, a prime implicant that has at least one cell which is not shared by any other prime implicant. That is called the essential prime implicant. The goal of this process is to find a set of a prime implicant that covers all mean terms in the K map, and then we want to find the minimal set uh, so that we find that the minimal cost uh, expression. So here, given k map of a four variables, so a, b, c, d, four variable k map we have, uh, we have a and b for indices of a row, and c and d for indices of columns. Uh, then uh, how do we find the prime implicant? Prime implicant is by definition find the maximum size uh, adjacent group. So here, those four cells in the center are adjacent to each other, and we cannot find any larger, including the, all those four. So this is a prime implicant. But if you consider only those two, this is not a prime implicant, because uh, we can find uh, that the another group with a 4 covers those two entirely. So, in terms of a set concept, uh, this 2 is a subset of a larger set in blue. So, the subset cannot be prime implicant. Uh, only maximum possible size group is a prime implicant. Uh. So, another prime implicant we can find from this k map is uh, this column. This column, we have a group of four cells in adjacency. We cannot find any superset that entirely covers those four cells in a group. So this is another prime implicant. Another prime implicant we can find from this map is uh, these four cells. Yeah, these are four cells uh, in a group. Well, partly it's shared by other prime implicant, but there is no other bigger prime implicant which completely covers those four. So this is a valid prime implicant. Another prime implicant is this row. Two of the cells are shared by other prime implicant, though, but this is a maximum possible grouping. So this is another prime implicant. Another prime implicant is uh, those four. So two here and the two there is another prime implicant. Uh, and another prime implicant is uh, four corners. Uh, so four corners is another prime implicant. As you can find, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, sometimes you may miss to identify prime implicant uh, because of those overlapping is allowed. Uh, so we need to pay careful attention to identify all prime implicant. Essential prime implicant is a prime implicant which has a, at least one cell, which is a mean term, not shared by any other prime implicant. That's the definition of a essential prime implicant. From this map, what you can see is that this cell this mean term is not shared by any other prime implicant. So this mean term is only covered by this prime implicant, which is expressed as a BD. 
So BD is an essential prime impulse counter. Another essential prime impulse counter is a because of this mean term, it's not shared by any other prime counter, but it's exclusively covered by four corners. So four corner is another essential prime impulse counter. So here, because of those two mean terms are uniquely covered by two prime impulse counter, so this is essential prime impulse counter, and then we have another essential prime impulse counter. All other prime implicants are non-essential prime implicant. Here, given the function f, uh, let's try to find uh, all prime implicant. Uh, so here, here we have a k-map. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, the 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is k map for the given function f. So let's find all prime implicants. So prime implicants are the maximum size grouping. So uh, we can find that uh, group with uh, 8 cells. So those 8 cells are adjacent to each other. So we find that this is a a prime implicant. We cannot find any larger one, but if you choose one row only, then which is a subset for this prime implicant. So one row only with the four cells cannot be a prime implicant. Another prime implicant is a four corners. So four corners is not completely included any bigger prime implicant although it's partly shared with the other prime implicant though so that is a another prime implicant another prime implicant is a these two and these two together okay that's a, a group with a four cells a, and that's another prime implicant a. so you, you you can see that only those two cells cannot be prime implicant because uh, these two is completely included by a group of a four. So any subset cannot be prime implicant. You can easily verify that those three uh, prime implicant expression is uh, A, B not C, B not D not. Another example, given function G, Let's find all prime implicants for this. So let's first construct a K map. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12, 13, 14, 15. So prime implicant uh, is a maximum possible grouping. So with a 4, this is one prime implicant. Uh, and uh, we know we don't have any more group with the uh, four cells. Uh. So next uh, we try to find a group of uh, two cells. Uh. Let me change the color blue. So here one prime implicant could be these two cells. And another prime implicant is uh, these two cells. Uh, another prime implicant, these two cells, and uh, these two cells. Uh, and another prime implicant is uh, these two cells. Uh, so we have find uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, another prime implicant with a size 2 and uh, we have uh, another prime implicant uh, which oftentimes uh, missed to look, identify is uh, those two cells so those two cells can be uh, another prime implicant so we find uh, uh, seven prime implicants uh, one two three four five six prime implicants with a size 2 so one, two, three, four, five, six uh, expression of those are there, and then the size four prime implicant expression is here. Uh, but uh, those expressions we consider 
variable AB here, of course, and the CD here, then the expression is a given like that. So we have identified all prime implicants. Here, essential prime implicant is a the red one only because the red one only has at least one min term, this one, which is a not shared by any other prime implicant. All other prime implicants in blue, all the cells in the group is shared with the other prime implicants. So they are not essential prime implicants. Here is an, another example. Given function g, let's uh, find uh, all prime implicants and the essential prime implicants. And eventually, let's uh, find uh, the simplified expression for this one. So let's uh, first construct a uh, k-map. So we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9. 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have constructed a K-map for the given list of mean terms. The first step is uh, identify all prime implicants. Let me change color. So here, uh, the largest size is uh, with uh, four cells. Uh, so this this is a uh, one prime implicant, and the expression for this one is a wx. And wx does not change, and yz changes. So we have a wx, this one. And another prime implicant with the four cells is a four corners. So we have a four corner. This is another prime implicant, and another prime implicant is, uh, let me change color again, uh, these four is another prime implicant. And uh, we find uh, one more prime implicant, actually two more, but one more with a size of four, that is, uh, we have a two here and a two there. That's another prime implicant with a size of 4. And the last prime implicant is this guy, the size 2. So we have identified all prime implicants. And only one of them is with the two cells. So we have three variables. And the others have size of 4, so we have two variables. Next step is uh, to identify essential prime implicant. Let me change color again. Essential prime implicant is a uh, prime implicant that has uh, at least one min term which is not shared by any other prime implicant. So here we can find one min term, this guy which is not shared by any other prime implicant. So this four corner prime implicant exclusively covers that. Okay, another one is here as well. So the four corner is a prime, essential prime implicant. Another prime essential prime implicant is a, because of this guy, this mean term is exclusively covered by this prime implicant. It's not shared by any other prime implicant. So this is uh, another essential prime implicant. Another essential prime implicant is because of this mean term. This is uh, another prime implicant. So to find the simplified expression, the first step is uh, have all essential prime implicants uh, in the expression. So we have uh, three essential prime implicants, uh, and then we should include all three essential prime implicants in the expression. If we have all those three essential prime implicants, uh, then what we cover in the k-map is a uh, four corner here, 
because of this essential prime inductor, those two mean terms are also covered. And because of this prime essential prime inductor, this one is also covered. So the only one, the only mean term not covered yet is uh, this mean term. Remember, the simplified expression is to cover all mean terms at least once uh, with a minimal set of uh, prime implicants. So essential one have to be part of the expression because uh, those guys have at least one mean term uniquely, exclusively covered by itself. So all of those three are part of that. Then next step is uh, cover the remaining mean terms, uh, not covered by essential prime implicant, uh, and uh, try to cover the remaining one with a minimal set of uh, prime implicants. Uh. Also, if possible, try to cover as large PIs as possible. The larger the PI, the less number of literals appear, which end up less requiring hardware. So that's the logic behind that. So to cover this remaining one with the largest possible remaining prime implicants, uh, we have uh, this mean term, uh, this prime implicant uh, with a size of 4, or we can have uh, this prime implicant uh, with a size of 4. So we have a tie. This mean term could be covered by this mean term, uh, prime implicant, or this prime implicant. Since those two choices, so we have the same size of PI, we say we have a tie in terms of a cost criteria, so that we have a two simplified expressions. We can cover the remaining mean term either one of the two cases. So we have a two simplified expression, so all, all, both have uh, EPIs in common. So we have uh, EPIs in common, and uh, we have either this PI or that PI to cover the remaining mean term. So that is a uh, how to find the simplified expressions using KMAP. The step is first identify all PIs. The second step is identify essential PIs among PIs. And then find the simplified expression. First, include all EPIs. If there is any remaining mean terms not covered by all EPIs, then try to add remaining PIs to cover all remaining mean terms. When you choose uh, remaining PIs, choose a larger size as much as possible. But if there is a ties, then we may have uh, more than one simplified uh, expressions. The KMAP technique could be extended to five variables as well, uh, So, but it's a little bit uh, harder to visualize though. But if you have a five variable function, you can use a five variable KMAP. Five variable KMAP is uh, obtained by putting two four variable KMAP side by side. So we have a W, X, Y, Z, one four KMAP, and then another W, X, Y, Z, another four variable KMAP, and then we consider the one four variable k-map where v is 0 and the other k-map v is 1. So that adjacency is achieved between two four variable k-map. So adjacency within four k variable k-map applies exactly the same way we have discussed. But in addition to that we have another dimension of adjacency which is between two maps. So this ma uh, mean term and this mean term, same position in two maps, uh, we have adjacency. So similarly, this guy and this guy is adjacent. So when you deal with the four variable k-map, we need to deal with the adjacency between two maps uh, as well.